Hello and welcome to Swiss Info. I'm Susan Masika and I'm in Boston with members of the Swiss Society of Boston and some other organizations. We're at the Hampshire House just off of the public gardens. Other people might know the location from a television series called Cheers. In the basement there's that old bar. Why don't, why, let's go in the round and I'd like to hear uh, a little bit about you, who you are, and your name, how long you've been here. I'm Marcus Reberger. I've been in Boston for over 30 years. Originally come from Zurich, and uh, I operate this um, restaurant slash function facility with five other restaurants. Excellent. My name is Jean-Pierre Mittard. Um, I grew up in uh, Switzerland uh, in two parts. Uh, in the first part of my life in the Valais, in the French part of Switzerland, and then uh, uh, in Zurich. Uh, my mother tongue is German, but I grew up with both languages. I have been a mobile Swiss, I will call it, uh, for the last 24 years uh, in New York, London, and Boston for the last nine years. Uh, two years ago, I started a, uh, a new role as well um, in connection with this topic here today. Um, I have joined the uh, Council of Swiss Abroad, which is uh, a body that uh, tries to represent the Swiss abroad and their interests uh, back into Switzerland. Excellent. Hi, I'm, uh, th thank you for having me. I'm Larry Grobe, and I'm uh, a dual Swiss American. Uh, my dad was from Basel and mom from Thury. And uh, I don't get back often, but I'm s connected uh, through an organization. I have the privilege to be the president of an organization called the Friends of Switzerland, otherwise known as FASI. And through the Friends of Switzerland, we, uh, we recognize uh, intercultural achievement and have an annual award. Um, now in its 52nd year, uh, we provide a grant to young Swiss or Americans uh, to study in each other's country, young professionals. And uh, we have a, a speaker series, a stuntish uh, speaker and luncheon series that we run in the Boston area here. And um, so I'm very happy to be involved in Switzerland uh, through this and the other organizations here. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Sharon Pyre. Uh, I'm also a dual Swiss American. My mother is from New York and my father is from Lucerne. I was born in Switzerland. I spent half of my life in Switzerland um, and I've been living in Boston for the last 14 years. I came here for university uh, and I've got two children and I speak uh, Swiss German to them every day of their lives. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm a member of the Swiss Society of uh, Boston's board, um, and one of my key interests is bringing more education uh, to the forefront as far as relations between Switzerland and the United States go. Interesting. And we met those children earlier, and you'll have the chance to actually hear a bit from them later on on our website. So first topic is, do you participate in Swiss politics? And if so, why? And if not, why not? Who would like to answer first? Um, I, I'll take the first stab at it to open <laughs> it up. <laughs> um, um, I vote regularly. Uh, my daughter, who is now 27, votes as well regularly. Um, I feel it kind of keeps me in touch with what's happening in the old country. And, uh, you know, through the different avenues um, on websites and Tagesanzeiger and, and several different publications, I kind of learn on where my position should be, could be, and uh, I have a long discussion as well with our immediate family, my wife as well, to figure it out. And, and uh, it's, it's interesting and it's a, it's a learning curve. Good. I would say similarly, I, I wouldn't call myself a politician, uh, but uh, I would say like any Swiss citizen that is a, a little involved in what's going on and interested in, in politics, I've continued that on as I, as I went abroad. It's in a way you recognize even more when you are abroad that it's a privilege to participate in, um, in votes four times a year on specific topics. And some interest you more, some interest you less. That's the same thing when you live in Switzerland. You have topics that you like better, and some you, you, you like less, and some you find mm -hmm. too complicated. It's, it continues like that. So I'm getting the voting materials. You know, Some are complicated, some are difficult to understand. Others 
are more interesting to spend some time on. And that's how I involve myself. Um, and uh, with my newest role too, I try to kind of like carry some of that uh, into the Swiss community here in Boston as well. Excellent. Okay, um, I, uh, having been, um, in having had my entire life here in the States, so I did not live in Switzerland, um, I'm I, the one with a guilty look on my face. I, I, I don't vote uh, currently. Um, and uh, the reason is not, I'm not one of those who feels that I shouldn't vote. I shouldn't have the privilege to vote in a far away, now far away home country. Um, I, I just uh, have not uh, made, made the effort. Uh, I do follow Swiss News fairly closely, though, as part of my job with my organization. Um, we, at our events, we deliver a news report on the news from Switzerland. Um, I pull that together and, in fact, uh, use uh, Swiss Info quite a bit for sourcing my material. Uh, so I have a, have a good interest uh, in what's going on over there. I find some of the things that the Swiss do uh, with regards to voting to be fascinating uh, in contrast to what we do here. Uh, I, I, I follow the the simplification and the creation of, uh, of voting materials and information, which I find interesting stuff going on in Switzerland, and some other aspects of, uh, of making uh, voting more accessible to more people and driving perhaps more young voting are things that uh, we could certainly learn from here. So that's my knowledge, and I think uh, perhaps if we do this again, I'll be able to report that I'm, I'm voting now. Mm -hmm. So I hope. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. I think I'm more in Larry's camp. I was oblivious to the fact that as a citizen living abroad, I could vote until uh, Jean-Pierre Jean uh, pointed it out to me. And so this will probably be the first election that I'll be voting in. Um, I've submitted all of my paperwork. Um, and uh, I think as a Swiss living abroad, it's very important to be able to voice your concerns and your interests and bring your knowledge level to the Swiss as well and vice versa. So to your point earlier, I, I completely agree. I think it'll be important, especially as my children get older, they're also Swiss, teaching them more about what's happening in Switzerland and the things, the resources that may be available to them as they grow up um, that are Swiss. Right. I'll, I like to add on that, the voting materials that get sent out from Switzerland are very detailed. And it's, it's interesting how you get to know how the government feels, how the opposition feels, and there's, there's a really strong factor on, like, now you got to make up your own mind. But i like to see if, um, because the Swiss abroad is a very big community, and not just in America, but I'd like to see if, yes, they come out in French, German, Italian, but I think having it in English and being a little bit removed and, you know, sometimes you say, well, you're, you're, the language that you use is what you dream in, and now you're reading this in German or French, and sometimes, as you said, it's a little bit more complicated than you care for. So but you dream in English? Uh, well, sometimes. <laughs> 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 and so, um, I knew you were going to pick up on that. Um, but I think if it was sent out in English, it would be fantastic. Now, my millennium daughter Googles the whole thing and gets the English version of it, but that's kind of like a way around the bush. Um, I think it would be very helpful you know, like in your case, Larry, if, if the voting papers came out in English, well, you know, now it's an easy decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question. Can I, can I jump in? Uh, I was wondering, uh, the voting materials to which you're referring, um, I, uh, you may know the answer to this. Do they, are they central uh, Swiss? Do they reach the Swiss voter in Switzerland as well? Or are the voting material we receive here uh, different? Do they come through the organization of Swiss Abroad or, or something? Are they tailored to our outside existence? It's exactly the same material that everyone gets in Switzerland. In Switzerland, everyone gets it as normal course of business. And uh, abroad, it's those people that have actively registered to vote that receive those same materials. Um, but I, on the point of, of, of English, um, translating those materials into English, uh, this is not the first time I hear it. It's a very interesting uh, idea. 
um, especially if you want to reach um, the next generation right. um, of, of Swiss that live abroad. Uh, but it's a somewhat controversial thing. Absolutely. It, hits, it hits a nerve in the discussions yeah. in Switzerland. We had a, a colleague of mine on the Council of Swiss Abroad that has been on this council for many years, uh, Max Hechler from Arizona, has actually year after year has tried to have the Council of Swiss Abroad itself accept English as a language. Mm -hmm. Uh, the two official languages that we use, they are French and, and German. Um, but the point is that we have next generations in countries like the US, Canada, Australia, that is better equipped and feels more comfortable to participate in English. And it gets pushed, it gets a lot of pushback. Um, we just had an, a, another attempt, um, I say about a year and a half ago, and the emotions are riding high. Mm. We, we get a lot of pushback from delegates that live abroad, right? So maybe there should be, there could be more of an understanding, but there is a feeling that, you know, if you participate in the Swiss political life, you should also make the effort to understand it in the official Swiss languages. Um, so very interesting topic, emotional reactions, I would say, um, but discussions that we should have. That sounds yeah, very yeah. Swiss too. I mean, having grown up in Switzerland and moving there when I was 12, as someone who'd been living in the States all my life, uh, one of the key things that I noticed was anytime they had foreigners coming in, whether they were from Italy or at, the, at that point in time, the former Yugoslavia, it was about adapt. You want to be part of Swiss society, you have to integrate and, and adapt. And I always thought that was a very valuable thing because that's how people get along. That's how that country operates as well as it does. And so now it's kind of, they're doing the same thing to those of us who live abroad. Well, if you want to participate, adapt, right? You, you did grow up speaking English, but you mm -hmm. should probably learn the language if you want to participate. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good debate to have. It's a healthy one. Right, I just think as there's, and you probably know the numbers better than I do, almost about a million people, Swiss citizens living abroad, that's a pretty big chunk of people who not necessarily speak the language anymore or never have, but they're still Swiss citizens. Now, I'm probably not interested in making a fifth national language out of it, <laughs> but I think it would be well suited for the integration of, you know, every country struggles with voter participation. And therefore, I think if you made it more accessible, you probably get a much bigger interest in it. Well, and of course, you mentioned the voting materials that come out, that big fat envelope, but how else do you inform yourselves living as Swiss abroad? Where, where do you get your information about the issues and about candidates? Neue Zürcher Zeitung. I read that. Um, I also mm -hmm. read the, the local papers in, from Lucerne and my mm. parents live in Lucerne and my dad will constantly forward me things that he thinks are of interest. And then of course all of my friends on Facebook, my high school friends from Switzerland, uh, sharing things on Facebook and mm. social media. So. Well someone have, has to say Swiss Info, right? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Swiss Apart Info, from I meant. Swiss info, um, what are your other I sources? Would say, um, the, the different uh, websites of the political parties mm -hmm. um, and maybe as I have grown up in Switzerland and then moved abroad, I've kind of lived in that environment. Um, I kind of know which parties represent a bit more what I represent as well. And so um, when I want to have a, a bit of a different view besides the, the, the voting materials, uh, I check on uh, one or two political parties websites what they what their arguments are, where they come out on it, um, and that helps me sort of progress my opinion as well. Mm -hmm. right. I think it's a, it's a, I'm more of a Tagesanzeiger kind of guy, <laughs> um, but <laughs> to rivaling newspapers in, in Zurich. But uh, I think it's uh, several different ways, uh, obviously w the vast websites of, of different um, news organizations and, and whatnot, and especially on those topics that don't, 
evoke like a certain feeling of one or the other that you want to really kind of read about it or you know what I struggle with is certain personalities people uh, because we're a little bit removed from that and what I find interesting in Switzerland more so than in the States we vote on issues and topics more so than individuals and to me that is almost more important to be part of that saying you know okay I had a chance to talk about guns for example <laughs> or whatever it might be the the topic du jour but um, you know several several different sources kind of make up my mind uh, you, to that point, uh, Marcus, um, I, you know, in, in this age of uh, information overload, we all have to sort for our information. And some of us are more easily able to read through big brochures and so forth. I, I've heard about a, a, uh, an initiative in Switzerland whereby the positions of politicians are mapped. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you refer to it as a spider diagram yeah, illustration. Are you familiar with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, in terms of uh, understanding it from afar, if you're not deeply involved in it, your your options and the the relative positions rel relative to your issues and where you want to be on that diagram, it seems to be very helpful. I don't know if it's incorporated into the Swiss process uh, at, at large, but it seems to be a very interesting direction as an additional source of information to help you sort through what your where, where your issues will meet mm -hmm. um, and in a political uh, party. Has anyone here used that? Smartphone to get your spider web showing where you line up and where candidates line up? Yeah, it's... Um, them in the audience. It's, you know, the Swiss have, um, from where, where I said, always been very good at, at communicating uh, effect effectively uh, when, it, when it comes to graphics. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and so a diagram, I'm looking at the round table here, where the center is not much connection with your uh, issue, and further out is a big connection with the issue. Well, if you spread your 12 issues around, and then that spider is drawn relative to the center, and you can see where, you f where your interests are met very rapidly, it's, it's, it seems to be an effective tool. And I guess it's not uh, widely uh, utilized at this time, but I don't know. <coughs> um, sorry, jump in, but what, what I um, appreciate uh, and, and find almost an advantage uh, being outside of Switzerland and looking at these topics, Larry, you say information overload, right? There is tons of information. I can just imagine, you know, if something is very heavily discussed in Switzerland and you have a dozen different parties having a view and everyone takes the topic apart and there's details here, details here, details here, and they fight on these little details. That's definitely information overload. And I really enjoy and appreciate when you're a little further away from it, you can look at the topic and say, is this progress I agree with? Not everything has to be perfect, but is this progress I agree with and can I get behind this holistically, it's almost like a macro view, as opposed to you know, taking micro views and there's a few things that I don't like and therefore I'm going to say no to the whole thing. I really enjoy that view. That's, to me, it's a more efficient view um, of, of, of finding what ends up moving the needle for Switzerland in a good direction and then I get behind it. Right, the objective view is, is very interesting from a little bit further removed. Um, one of the things I like to see is the, you know, I call it the fifth Switzerland, um, and what the issues are there and who really starts taking care of that, where there's, there's probably some issues that are, not addressed or, or you know not that focused of of that almost million people that live abroad that still have interests and might go back to Switzerland at some point or you know in the near or far future whatnot but you know a million people out of what eight and a half 
We're mm -hmm. up now, all right? I left 30 years ago, so. <laughs> How <laughs> um, many were then? Uh, um, it's, it's a big chunk of change. You know, that's, that's another cantone that doesn't necessarily have so much of a voice. Well, I'm thinking about the view you have from here and talking about that spider web system showing positions. Do you think that the, the Swiss parliament, in when, it, when it's reformed in October, should be more to the left or more to the right? Is it just right as it is? What, how would you like to see the new parliament? people representing the interests both of those living there and those far, far away? I'm an old-fashioned guy. I'm a conservatist. So, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So uh, I like to see my Switzerland the way I have left it. Now, with somewhat of a progress as well, obviously. But, you know, I think the success of <coughs> Switzerland has been that it's been conservative, it's been thought through, any of the issues really we don't jump into like certain other countries were like, oh, this sounds like a good idea and some other regime comes in and was like, well, uh, let's just turn it back to the other <laughs> situation. And it seems like when Switzerland makes a decision, it's steadfast forward versus some of that knee-jerk reaction you see in other countries. So I would generally say that I value the diversity of the parliament. Um, there is no one party in the Swiss parliament that has more than 30% mm. um, of, the, of the seats, and there is many parties involved. And uh, obviously, it's a mirror image of the population that has voted these um, politicians in um, and it shows the diversity of opinions and um, subject matter expertise that we, we have in the country. I value that a lot. I value that a lot because I see the contrast with the system and how it works in the US. Um, so first and foremost in response to your question Susan I would say I wouldn't want big changes um, because I think big changes lead to swings and lead to inconsistencies um, and programs get disrupted. Um, so that for me stands first. Um, fir and then as I'm thinking about my positioning where I have stood politically over my life, um, I describe it somewhere from middle to left, slightly left. Of course I'd wish that that part gets a little stronger. Um, they don't need to have a majority because that would not be good for the, for the diversity that I described. Um, but it, 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 I'm, I'm answering in that order, right? I, I think if the, the, the voting process creates a diverse um, parliament that reflects what the country is, it's a good thing. And it has been relatively constant right. over many, many years. Individual parties have come and gone but if you look at kind of like the blocks, it's, it's, it's amazingly constant. Other thoughts about how, how you'd like to see the parliament and basically, yeah, the people who represent Switzerland? Well, I, I can say with, with no expertise whatsoever uh, that um, from a personal point of view, well, let me start by saying what I think I learned through my exposure to my Swiss family in Switzerland and friends there and so forth over the years is, is I grew up with an international um, outlook. I, under, I grew up understanding the value of, uh, of cultures and how they blend together to become something even, even greater, more interesting. And, uh, and I've always felt uh, you know, that in Switzerland uh, that it's a, it's a microcosm of, of, a, of a lot of that. And so uh, that, in contrast to the way I think in a very large country like ours, it's easier to find oneself um, not that concerned with other cultures, other countries, the world in general. And I think that's very dangerous. And um, so I would uh, like to sort of see that um, 
a, a perhaps a left, a leftwards, a, a sufficiently left uh, orientation. Again, in a, in a sense of a mix, not radically so, in Switzerland, so that uh, that diversity and um, people of many persuasions, countries, religions, etc., coming together is is reflected in the way the country sees itself. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think I think too much radical change <coughs> is not a good thing. I think it's the way that the government is organized in Switzerland and structured is done so in such a way that it protects against uh, that kind of radical change, which is one of the reasons why I think we've had so much consistency and 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 uh, help, you know just healthy evolution uh, of 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 politics in Switzerland and law reform. Um, I think that as far as you know, moving a little bit to the left, what I what I'd like to see more of is a little bit more openness toward, like what you said, that fifth, uh, you know, element, uh, people living abroad um, who might want to come back to Switzerland, keeping that doorway open. And I think education is one of the ways in which that can happen. You know, we've had uh, numerous discussions about um, just in Boston itself. Uh, in, in our Swiss organizations about the Swiss internship or the apprenticeship process that they have and how that can be applied globally. Um, I think I, I work right now in a, for a diversified manufacturing company um, that is global uh, that could benefit from the Swiss apprenticeship mm -hmm. uh, sure. model. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like I said earlier, I've got children who are fluent in German and Swiss German and would maybe one day like to you know, have the matura and pass that, but there's no avenue for them to do that. France has an avenue uh, for their citizens living abroad. You can do it by mail, uh, homeschooling, and you can, every year, you submit your uh, work and your exams, and then uh, you get accredited for every year of your schoolwork, and eventually you can get the matura, or what they call A-levels, I believe it is. I would like something of that nature so that people who are living abroad have that opportunity to come back into Switzerland as opposed to being isolated, right? Um, and sitting kind of on the outside. So that's really something then that you'd like to see happening that yeah, lawmakers would figure that out to help the Swiss abroad. Right, and it's complicated because we have, you know, we have the federal level and then we have the canton level, right? And, and most of the laws are passed at the canton level as far as education goes. The federal government doesn't get involved. But this would be one of those examples, you know, that was mentioned earlier where we are another set of, you know, citizens who, who have rights and uh, maybe can bring more value to the, to the country as a whole. And people leave and they come back. Um, and Switzerland is one of those countries that's landlocked, right? And growing up there, we would hear a lot about they can't see beyond the mountains. <laughs> um, so this would be a way to help, you know, broaden their horizons as well. And that's where I think the left, you know, being a little bit more to the left and a little bit more open to that kind of, that it's not a threatening change that's being asked for here, right? This, these are one of those healthy debates that I, I'd like to see happen. And what else is on the wish list as Swiss living abroad? What's something you'd like to see, similar to, say, in education, things being recognized abroad? Well, I think I, I, I always go first. I don't know why. Yeah, you don't <laughs> have to like keep the order the we right started it. Right Anybody can jump um, in, but that's great. I think the representation of uh, the fifth Switzerland, I think, uh, would be very advisable. Um, I think Jean-Pierre brought up a good point in Switzerland. There's so many, it's a multi-party system. And I think it's much easier to find a party or a affiliation to um, represent you and, and have the right um, minds and ideas than you have versus here it's either one or the other. And I think more and more in America, people struggle. Well, you know, I don't really agree with this party, but I totally agree with the other party, so now what? Um, and in Switzerland, with four or five, six different parties, um, you're, you're more likely to find somebody that can represent you, which, which I think is great. I, you know, you have brought it up you know, the, the easier way of communication 
e-voting, I think, is just a must. I know we are trying hard in two cantons, I think, with the e-voting now, uh, two different systems, whatnot. Um, and of course, it has to be safe and it has to work versus, you know, let's do it because we want it. Um, I think that that would really help, especially from far away. I would, um, if I can, I would change the question a little bit. Okay, that's allowed. That's allowed. Um, and, I, and I'm doing that because this is a little similar to when we talked about translating the voting materials in English. There's a, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm become so aware of the dynamic um, of who we are, these Swiss abroad. The Ausland Schweiz. The word says, you know, mm -hmm. it's like someone that is gone, disconnected, <laughs> yeah. gone, right? Yeah, gone for whatever reasons. Looking for something else. Don't even come back, right? I'm exaggerating, right? But to get the point across, and that's why, in my and this is not, I didn't come up with that, but I adopted it in my my introduction. I said mobile Swiss instead of Swiss abroad, and maybe note to self, maybe we should change the Council to Council of Mobile Swiss instead of Council of Swiss Abroad. Mm -hmm. um, there is such an action-reaction dynamic that right now doesn't get us to achieve to mo do more for the fifth Switzerland. So if the, the ask of the question is like what else could Parliament do to support the Swiss Abroad it's tricky. I actually think, and this is kind of like the rephrasing of it, I think there's a lot of upside potential for Switzerland to somehow use the Swiss abroad more. Right? We are like citizen diplomats out there that know many things about Switzerland because of our connections back to Switzerland. But we also know many things about the countries we live in. And when you think about it, there are not that many people around. It's the 800,000 people yep. that live abroad, but everyone in different countries too, right? So there's not a lot of people that have these combos of knowing something about the US and knowing something about the Switzerland and how it connects, and maybe it's education, maybe it's, it's arts and culture type of things, mm -hmm. the apprenticeship thing. There are not that many people that know these things. And if we somehow can work more together to find that upside potential, it's for the good of Switzerland. It's for Switzerland as a citizen of this world to contribute um, its beliefs, its values, its things that it does well into the country. So use us um, or let's work together. Those that are interested, some are not interested, that's fine. It's the same in Switzerland. Some participate in the political process, some don't. But if somehow we can figure out how to wake up that potential, um, I think that will be rewarding for us that live abroad, and it will be a positive for Switzerland as well. And as Swiss living in the United States, what's your impression of the perception of Switzerland here? I'm sure you, you might hear the word Swedish used <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> but <laughs> apart from that, what do you think is the general perception? When people hear that you're from Switzerland originally, what do they say? What's it's usually a an, an pretty engaging, positive uh, reaction you get from people. Um, you, you, you get a lot of people talking about their experience in Switzerland or a, a travel or a friend or a study or something they've done over there uh, in business or personally. Uh, so I mean, in, in terms of uh, general uh, perception of Switzerland, I think, I, I think you find it generally positive. I think they're there are folks who may uh, may be aware of certain issues that that they might not find not find positive, but then have to pretty have a pretty good awareness mm -hmm. of the country already. You know, maybe uh, the position with respect to Brexit, uh, Euro, yeah, the Euro, yeah, the EU, and uh, and other things. But um, on, on the other hand, I know people who I talk to s about Switzerland with, and and we'll talk about uh, the environment, and sustainability, and the uh, the, the forwardness with which I think Switzerland uh, politically and business-wise and other ways is addressing 
its relationship with, uh, with the environment. It sort of has to because it's such a compressed and condensed uh, relationship that, that you can't ignore things as, as you, again, you can in a country that spreads for 3,000 miles. Anyhow, so uh, I don't know if that answers any well, of your question. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah I'm interested in the, any kind of input you've had, anything, whether it was on a, a social level, a, an economic level, a political level, some, some impressions that you think are had in the United States regarding Switzerland. I think, uh, to your point, there's a lot of, oh, Sweden, <laughs> there is a lot of that. Uh, there's a lot of, it uh, depends on who you talk to. If it's people who work in business uh, for global companies like the one I work for, people will know. We have offices in Switzerland, so they, they, they'll know where it is. But uh, I don't think that they, and that they'll know that the, the country is beautiful and it's expensive, and, but it's a nice place to go and the food is great and it's very clean and the people are very nice, but to understand really why it operates that way and why, it's, why it is the way it is, uh, kind of the, 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 the root cause of it, that's, that's not clear, I, I don't think, to, to most uh, Americans. And what I find, to your point earlier, when I raise issues like at work about the apprenticeship model, um, or even, you know, just in general dinner conversation, people talk about the rising costs of education in the United States and everyone always needed to go to college and now here we've got all these millennials and they're mowing lawns for their parents' friends because they can't find the job they want. Well, Switzerland never had a problem like that. We've got a very good system of apprenticeships. Um, I know my mother, when she moved to Switzerland years ago before I was born, couldn't grasp the idea that someone wouldn't get a college <coughs> education. My goodness, you know. But when she's lived there now for 40 years, she sees the benefit of it. And people are, 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 are able to go into tracks where they can make a contribution to society and they can be happy in the job that they have and they're not trapped. They can move now into different channels, right? If they want to get a university degree, having done an apprenticeship, that is an option these days. I think a lot of that is influenced by people like us, to your point about the mobile Swiss. Uh, it's, it's, it's these ideas and these experiences that we have abroad that we can bring back to Switzerland and vice versa and it doesn't happen the other way. There's not a lot of that what works in Switzerland coming to a large country like the United States. Maybe it's because Switzerland is a small country and people say it's easier to run a small country, but then I point to the state of New York. <laughs> is that better run than Switzerland? I think not, right? So I think there's opportunity there at your point. <coughs> yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, if I could just tag on to this the, to, with respect to the apprenticeship point, um, I think Switzerland's getting more and more recognition for the robustness and the inspiration that its apprenticeship system represents and its applicability here in the States. Um, there is a, a sort of apprenticeship renaissance going on here in the States. Um, one of the recent winners of our Stratton Prize was Ambassador Susie Levine and her husband Eric, who spent years in Switzerland familiarizing themselves with the apprenticeship system, working with thousands of apprentices and hundreds of businesses and then trying to bring it to the attention of people here in the states upon their return. And they've been working at the state level with govern governors and other state workforce development organizations across the country. We here in Massachusetts have um, formed a small task force uh, to try to sh share the inspiration of the Swiss apprenticeship system mm -hmm. with the people in the state government who are actually there doing this now uh, trying to develop a uh, strategy for the state with respect to uh, business um, and academic connections that are apprenticeship-like. And so I think more people in the states are going to be seeing Switzerland for that kind of inspiration, and it's a very good thing, and it's something we I agree really with could use here. Absolutely. We need a path that's not college, a path to success, yeah. and it can be done. And yeah, your, your work with the Massachusetts Department of Labor sounds like a good upcoming story, maybe, for some Yeah, yeah it could, could be. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so the general point, I think, here is, again, upside potential for more. And these are things, observations that, that we make uh, as we are here. Fundamentally, the U.S. and the Swi Switzerland, in many regards, is they are not that different, right, politically. The Constitution and so on, there's a lot of similarities, obviously, because it was a copy of each other. Uh, but I've, I think in, in terms of values and fundamental, you know, general 
approach to life, approach to the economy, e etc. There's a lot of similarity. We understand each other. You know, sometimes we are referred to each other as sister republics. And um, I think actually it's useful for Switzerland to be even more aware of this. Um, the interest of the apprenticeship program is really an opportunity for Switzerland to lead. But even take Obamacare. Obamacare is something that has been somewhat inspired, in, you know, from the Swiss uh, from the Swiss healthcare system as well. And I think there's a lot of those things that we could explore uh, more. There's now um, potential talk of a trade agreement between Switzerland and um, and the U.S. And um, I think we can put more efforts behind these ideas. Uh, we can maybe use the citizen diplomats that live here in the country already. Uh, we maybe can better um, concentrate the efforts uh, from Switzerland themselves. Uh, efforts from Switzerland sometimes come out of different departments. Sometimes it's the Department of Exterior, sometimes it's the Department of Economy. So maybe that's not all um, ideally coordinated, I don't know. I mean, you know. But I could just see how more of those efforts, maybe uh, it's, it's, it's about Switzerland being more confident about the influence it can have in, in, in leading certain things. I mean, Switzerland stands for innovation, it stands for quality, high education, it has great views on transportation. There's a, a lot of things that it does well. Carry it out, make the world a better place with these things. I just wanted to point out uh, a little known fact maybe, and that is that uh, Massachusetts and the, and the Canton Basel have a, a sister relationship, a formal sister relationship, which um, may not be that active um, and now. It was when it began a number of years ago. Uh, and it's something uh, you know, I hope our organization can put the spotlight on again because there have been ex exchanges, academic and other, and, uh, and other governmental connections. Um, I don't know how many people know about this. I didn't either. I didn't either. Thank you. Now, a last question that steps away from politics a bit, but very much reflects who you are and where you are. I'd like to know what is something that you miss about Switzerland or Swiss, the Swiss lifestyle, and what is something that you really appreciate about living in the United States? Don't start with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's, that's one people may need to think about a bit. Well, but it can really be anything. As I've been in Boston for many years, I think Boston's very a uh, European style city. It feels comfortable. It probably feels a little bit more Swiss than many other cities in the United States. Um, uh, what do I miss? Um, I, I think maybe the, the cleanliness and the organization, but then in the same time, I love the freedom and uh, the creativity that is a little bit more prevalent over here, maybe. I miss the ability to get in a car and be on a ski slope in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the ability to get up in the mountains on a gray day and just have beautiful sunshine and fresh air. And um, what, I, what I don't miss is the, the attitude, um, a little bit of, of, I don't wanna say negativity, but I love, what I love about the United States is try, go get, uh, positive attitude. You fail, you get up, you go again. Um, and especially as a woman, <laughs> that kind of attitude in Switzerland was, when I was living there, not so welcome. Um, and maybe it's it just fear or lack of confidence um, right, right. as opposed to welcome, I don't know. But I feel more yeah. comfortable in a professional environment here in the States. Yeah, having followed sort of the entrepreneurial um, div styles in Switzerland over for many years um, until to where they are today, I think tremendous um, progress has been made in terms of uh, in, in instilling an entrepreneurial outlook and an entrepreneurial approach. Um, the Swiss Next Consulate here is it's centrally involved in promoting uh, entrepreneurial awareness amongst Swiss who come here and go through their programs and whatnot. But you know, uh, success through failure is something that um, maybe Sharon's thinking of that is exactly the way things happen here. You know, you fail, 
you learn something, you go on, you do another thing. Um, and that wasn't always the way in Switzerland. Um, I would also say, for me personally, shift gears here, the one thing I miss about Switzerland is the hikes in the mountains uh, where every person you see, it's Grüezi. I've kind of missed that degree of uh, open friendliness here, so much that I put it on my license plate. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. So I'm wow. waiting, waiting for the honks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I agree with everything that has been said about the, uh, the, the nature of the outdoors in Switzerland. I would uh, agree that that's probably a, a piece that I miss the most. Uh, you don't need to go far, right? You don't need to go far to find the next lake to hike around or the next mountain to uh, hike up or what have you. Um, and then on the other side, in the US, uh, similar to you know what you both pointed out, I would say the positive attitude, the can-do attitude. Uh, when something new comes up, it tends to be, let's try it, uh, let's see, this could work. There's, there is an enthusiasm be behind a new idea um, where Maybe in contrast in Switzerland, it's more like finding the reasons not to do it. Great. And would anybody in the audience like to jump in on that? Or has anyone got a question from the earlier part of the discussion? Uh, yes? One thing I liked about here, and I came partially to the United States for that, was the educational opportunities. When I grew up in the 70s, 60s, 70s, there was really none for women, for smart women to get ever a professorship or something like that. High school, gymnasium was about the highest we could aim for. And here that was different. It was more on merit and less on, you know, other, other things. And so I'm very grateful for that for here. And of course I miss the food and I miss the mountains <laughs> and I grew up on Philosoph and we go along the Are and all of that. I miss the swans right outside the door. Yes. And and the language. I hardly ever get to speak Swiss German. And it's a beautiful language. I'm a linguist trained as well, so that's part of I'm collecting memories of, of words. Kikampf and all the bumble amid the bites, things like that, that maybe today nobody uses anymore. But th that's home. Can, can I s respond, can take on a jump off from there? There are so many things that the Swiss are good at bringing here that you miss over there. You can bring the mountains, but you can bring other things. So and one example is we have a remarkable woman in the Boston area. Her name is Renata von Charner. Mm -hmm. And Renata was a la landscape architect, Swiss born, Swiss trained, came to the United States and uh, brought her Swiss sensibilities about how cities and their rivers, their waterways interact with each other. She brought it to Boston. She formed an organization called the Charles River Conservancy and uh, engaged thousands and thousands over the years of volunteers to help work, maintain, sustain, beautify the Charles River Banks. And um, one of the projects she's leading right now is uh, swimming in the Charles River Basin, uh, Swiss style. Mm -hmm. The Stammbad right there, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. And so we can bring some Swiss, Switzerland here occasionally. Yeah, and, and she would like to have come, but she had another commitment. But um, on our website, there's a podcast actually I did with her. I interviewed her in Basel, and she took me on my first swim in the Rhine. I knew the Ara, but I didn't know the Rhine, so it was a very memorable interview. And this has been a very memorable interview, a quadruple interview. And uh, anyone else in the audience who would like to pipe in with something before we wrap up? Huh? Yes. I think one of the things that fascinated me over the years, one of the reasons I left. Um, Switzerland and come to the United States is for its rigidity of where I grew up and it just felt so constrained. Coming to Boston I felt like everything was open for me. Anything is possible and it really has. It has been. I've started three companies here and something I don't think I could have done in Switzerland 
And then the other side of it, you know that Switzerland is number one uh, innovator in the world. So I've always sort of played with this, this rigidity, this constraint. Is it triggering creativity and innovative thinking? And I think it is. So that's, to me, it's fascinating. And I keep asking, would I be OK going back? Could I feel comfortable living in Switzerland? And today, the answer is still no. But um, I think it's a very interesting tension coming out of Switzerland. Anyone else, or? Oh, I, I was not born in Switzerland, or raised in Switzerland, or educated, or anything else, but I lived there and worked there for 10 years in Basel. Uh, my wife is uh, a paper Swiss, and so that was our uh, connection for a long, long time. We just moved. We live here in town. We've lived in the city for a long time. And I remember some of the things that we miss from Switzerland, in addition to the things that you mentioned here, is the respect for personal space and quietness. And when I first moved to Switzerland, you know, it's like you went out and wanted to work outside at lunchtime, and everybody goes, oh no, this is the lunch hour. Oh, I understand. And I'm sitting there last night, it's about 10.15. I live in a high-rise apartment here in town. It's a concrete floored building, so it's pretty quiet. But I could hear the neighbor's television at 10.15 at night. And I, turned, and I said, and it's like, this would never happen in Switzerland. And it's like, because we were, there's a mutual respect in societal conduct. And it's like, some of those things that I like, that people will pick up, that they will recycle their glass bottles by color in a public deposit. All of these little things that add to the quality of life that many of us have enjoyed is lacking in most parts of America, and especially the respect for other people's quiet time. Interesting. Thank you. All right, well, thank you, everyone, especially those who got into the hot seats here and also for those in the soft seats. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.